Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and like I promised, I'm going to be doing a review of the Ugreen DXP4800 Plus. It's a four bay NAS, or NAS, which is basically a home server, which stands for Network Attached Storage. So you can load up to four SATA drives, or you can even use SATA SSDs, but they're more expensive and you won't get as much maximum storage. And the Ugreen NAS supports a wide compatibility list of third-party hard drives and SSDs, so be sure to check that out on their website. And its maximum storage is 112 terabytes. And the supplied drive cages make it really easy to install the drives. You just open up the little door there on the left, and then you close it back down and slide in the disk. No tools required. So I opted for four eight terabyte drives and put them in a RAID 5, which will give me about 21.8 terabytes as the system uses up 61 gigs. And seven terabytes are reserved for protection. If one of the drives goes down, I'll be able to swap it out with a new drive, rebuild the RAID 5 and not lose any data. And when you set this up and you're building a RAID 5, be prepared for it to take some time. And in my case, it took several hours to create the RAID 5. So 24 terabytes of cloud storage, which is what you could use this for, you're going to save a lot of money in the long run compared to Google Drive or iCloud Plus. And you can pretty much do anything you can with those services with your NAS out of your own home and no monthly service fees. First, we'll take a look at the setup, which for a NAS is super straightforward, very easy. I actually did it all with my phone. I just downloaded the app. I plugged in the NAS to my network. It recognized it and it was super easy and it's connected to my 10 gigabit switch so I now have my 2019 Mac Pro connected my Mac mini M4 Pro connected and the Ugreen NAS so they can all work together transfer files between the two and all access the NAS and you can replace all those cloud accounts if you want and use this as a cloud server so you can access all your files from the internet no matter where you are as long as it's turned on and connected and you can back up all your photos from your iPhone so you can have them going to the NAS and to your cloud account if you want or just to the NAS and use that as your main backup and it's really easy to set up using the you green app you just turn on phone syncing and it creates a folder in your personal folder and starts backing up your photos and videos to the NAS. And once your photos are on the NAS, you can then use their photo app to sort the photos, to use AI facial recognition and things of that nature, location and even items. They've got all kinds of different tools in there to manage your photo library. And stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to set up multiple time machines with multiple Macs on your NAS and how to back up individual hard drives using Carbon Copy Cloner to the Ugreen NAS. You can create individual time machine backups for all of your Macs to go to one central place. And over 10 gigabit, it should be quite speedy. It also has a built-in card reader, a USB-C port, and USB 3.2. So I was able to connect an XFAT formatted drive and then mount it onto my desktop via the network. The one thing you can't do is use APFS formatted hard drives. It does not recognize them when connected to the USB ports. And on the rear, we got an HDMI connection. We got a USB 3.2 connection, two USB 2 ports, a 2.5 gigabit connection and a 10 gigabit connection for two separate networks. So let's set it up and test it out. So you just want to power up the NAS and then make sure you're on the same network with your phone. So I use the phone, but you can also just use a web browser and hit next. Then the app will scan for your NAS. And once it finds it, then you register with the website, create a username and a password and write down that username and password because you don't want to get locked out of your NAS. And I'm going to skip through that registration part. And now we are initializing the NAS. Now we just go through 10 easy steps configuring the Ugreen OS, which is its own operating system that runs on the NAS. Think of it as a computer because it really is one. And we'll just speed this up and initializing is complete after a system reboot. And we're done initializing, rebooting, and we are at the beginning of the app setup. 
So now we're going to set up our storage pool and I'm going to just use all four drives in a RAID 5 configuration as I said previously. So here are the different choices you can make. You just scroll down and pick what you want to use and I'm going to go with the RAID 5 but you have other options and you can read about them here. And now we'll click on next and we're going to be formatting our hard drives. So they are gonna be completely erased. If you have data on the drives you're sticking in there, you wanna get it off first before you erase the drives because this formatting does completely erase your drives. And of course I'm using brand new drives so I'm not worried about erasing anything because there's nothing on them. So now it's formatting into the RAID 5 of all four drives and this takes a while because it's basically making them into one big drive with one fallback drive. And when it's done, we'll be able to access the NAS from all our computers and our phone. So I'm logged into the NAS and I'm going to show you how to set up a time machine for your Mac. And you can have multiple time machines for multiple Macs, which is pretty cool. And I've got my main user account here. That's my administrative account. That's the only one I have on here so far. And you can add more users, but it's just like Mac OS. You have a user account for each person. So each person gets their own personal folder not to be shared with someone else. Think of it as your home folder like in Mac OS where you can put your own subfolders, pictures, movies, whatever you want. It's your main storage location on the NAS. And if you set up photo syncing, for instance, they're gonna get put into that personal folder. So now we're gonna set up a shared folder for our Mac Pro to be our time machine location. So we're gonna hit create new shared folder. I'm gonna give it a name, Mac Pro TM, as in time machine. And I don't need the enable recycle bin check, so I'm gonna uncheck that and then hit create because time machine has its own way with dealing with trash. Okay, and now you can see I've got two shared folders, one for my Mac Mini Time Machine and one for my Mac Pro. So I'm going to jump over to the control panel now and we're going to go to File Service. Then we're going to click on Advanced Settings under File Service and Enable Bonjour. I already enabled it earlier for the Mac Mini, but you normally have to turn that on. And then we're going to hit Set Time Machine Folder. And we're going to pick our Mac Pro folder. And what this does is it enables the shared folder to work with Time Machine. So I've got two shared folders that are both set up for Time Machine now. One for my Mac Mini and now one for my Mac Pro. And we hit Save and then we hit Apply. And now we're going to go over to Mac OS System Settings to set up our Time Machine for the Mac Pro. So you can set up multiple Time Machines for multiple Macs. Okay, so now we jump to Mac OS and we open up our system settings and general go down to time machine and add backup disk and as you can see there is our shared disk that we created so we're going to select that and then our NAS is going to ask for our credentials so we have to put in the username and our password that we have for our NAS. Hit connect and you can see the drive now mounted on the desktop and then we follow along with our typical Time Machine setup. And Time Machine needs its own password, which is separate from your NAS password. You can use the same password. You can use your Mac's login password. I just use my Mac's user login password for all my Time Machines, so I don't forget what my Time Machine passwords are. They're all the same. And you can set a disk limit to the size of the Time Machine via Time Machine, or you can do it within the Ugreen OS when you're setting up your shared folder slash Time Machine. So we click on done and there we go. Our time machine is ready to start backing up our Macintosh HD. Now you can exclude or include hard drives into your time machine backup. So if you remove a drive from this exclude list, it will be included with your Macintosh HD in the time machine backup. I was playing around and started making this humongous time machine backup. <laughs> and then I'm like, what am I doing? I don't want to do it this way. So I decided not to do that. And what I decided to do is just use one time machine for my Macintosh HD and not include any of the other hard drives. And I'll get to how we back those up in a minute. Time Machine only supports APFS formatted hard drives or Mac OS journaled. It does not support XFAT. 
So you can't use Time Machine to back up things like your boot camp drive, which is NTFS, and my video 500 gig drive, which is formatted in XFAT. And that's why you see the minus sign grayed out because Time Machine can't back up those two drives. So we'll just take a quick look at my Mac mini Time Machine backup. Basically you have the shared folder is on your desktop and then you have to open up the sparse bundle which is your time machine backup is in a disk image. When it comes to putting it on a server or a NAS, that is how it works. And then you open up that sparse bundle and then you'll see your time machine backups. And if I go in there, we're gonna see that time machine always backs up your Macintosh HD and whatever drive you removed from the exclude list. So in this backup here, I've got my Macintosh HD, everything that's on there, except the operating system does not get copied but everything else does. And then I've got my home X drive, which actually has my external user account. And I have several videos on how to set that up. That's how that time machine is set up. So it's backing up the Macintosh HD and the extra drive home X. And that's it for setting up multiple time machines. And here's a little extra tip. You don't want to have to mount your shared folders every time you reboot your Mac or every time you boot up your Mac. All you gotta do is once they are mounted and saved in your keychain, you drag them into the login items window. Drag them over. Next time you boot up, as long as you're powered up on the NAS, they will automatically mount on the desktop. So Time Machine will find them. Otherwise, every time you boot or reboot, you're gonna have to mount those shared folders manually. So just to show you, I've rebooted my Mac Mini and bingo, they mount on the desktop automatically. Now that I added them to login items. Just want to show you the speeds I'm getting. You can see I'm getting like, it popped up to 600 megabytes per second for a second there, but I'm really averaging around 300, 350. Pretty good speeds thanks to the 10 gigabit connection. And of course, it's going to be much faster to copy data to the NAS than it is to upload it to iCloud Drive or Google Drive or Dropbox because my internet connection is only one gigabit, which is still pretty fast, but that'll only get you about 50 megabytes per second. So we can get our files online seven times faster than we can with a cloud service. And then they can be shared instantly with your clients. So here I'm just copying a Final Cut Pro project that's about 50 gigs and I'm getting a nice 350 megabytes per second. And I don't have any NVMEs installed, so I'm not using the NVMe cache, which might speed up the write speeds a little bit depending on what we're copying. And we'll just try Blackmagic Speed Disk test on the NAS in my personal folder here and see what we get. Oh, that's pretty good. Peaked at like 600. And when I install an NVMe and use it for caching, it should be even faster. So we'll have to try that out. But this is just the stock RAID 5, no NVMe, and it's getting pretty good speeds. We're almost saturating that 10 gigabit bus on the read speeds. And this is amorphous disk mark, and we'll just speed this up because it takes a little while. But again, getting really good speeds on that read. Look at that, almost a thousand megabytes per second. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with the performance not having the NVMe cache happening yet. And we're getting these kinds of speeds with just the 10 gigabit connection to the RAID 5 SATA drives. Impressive. So now we're gonna set up Carbon Copy Cloner to copy individual hard drives. And I'm just gonna do it once to show you how I do it. But the process can be repeated for each hard drive that you wanna back up. So we're gonna create a new shared folder and I'm gonna call it the same name as the drive I wanna back up with a BU at the end of it just for backup. And I'm gonna give it a volume size limit. It's actually a four terabyte drive, so I'm gonna limit it to four terabytes. This is just gonna be a basic backup. And you can choose to encrypt it or not, and then you can hit create. And then we hit okay, and now you can see we've got a new shared folder. And one thing I should have mentioned earlier, if you wanna see your shared folders mounted on the desktop, you have to turn on connected servers under finder, finder settings. So I have all of those checked. That way I see all my hard drives, connected servers, external drives on the desktop. And there's our empty shared folder. So we're now gonna set up Carbon Copy Cloner 
to clone our hard drive to the shared folder we created. And Carbon Copy Cloner is an app you can buy directly from them on their website, and you can use it for 30 days for free. I've been using Carbon Copy Cloner for years and it's never let me down. And you can see I got one day left on my demo, so I will be purchasing the latest version because I've got the older version. But anyway, so this is what it looks like after you launch it and you just set up a task and you can have multiple tasks and there's all kinds of settings in here that you can customize your backups. But we're just gonna keep it real simple on this one. And I just named it the same name. I named the backup shared folder. You can call it whatever you want, but I just keep it simple. And then we're gonna drag over from the volumes list, the drive I wanna back up, which is our source drive. And then we're gonna drag over the drive I wanna copy to our destination drive, which is the shared folder we created on the NAS. And it's really that simple. And it's gonna give you a few warnings here, but basically we are copying to a completely empty shared folder. That's our destination. And we've limited the size that it can use. So you can set up a schedule. And I mean, there's a plethora of options in Carbon Copy Cloner. That's a video of its own. But anyway, you can pick out hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever you wanna set, or you can just do it manually. So we're just gonna go in there and we're gonna get the backup started. And we hit done and we hit start because I'm just manually doing this, a one-time backup and away we go. So while Ugreen has their own sync and backup, it's really for mobile devices or backing up the NAS or backing up a NAS to a NAS, but it's not really for backing up your Mac to the NAS or hard drives to the NAS. So Time Machine and Carbon Copy Cloner are really the best way to go for your Mac backups to the NAS. So I thought I'd try out the cache, the read and write cache, and you have to use two matching NVMEs in size and brand, right? So I actually had two Oracos lying around, which are not on the supported list, but they seem to be working fine. You can see I'm getting like 800 write and 900 read. So it definitely is making a difference uh, when reading and writing like a five gig file to the NAS. But when doing long transfers, the cache is gonna fill up and then you're gonna get back down to about that 350 megabytes per second write speed. But when you're just doing like a 20 gig file or smaller files, you'll get that burst write speed of about 800 megabytes per second. And if you're using your NAS for video editing, you would definitely wanna have the cache in there for the read speeds, giving you almost a thousand megabytes per second. And here I'm copying over a terabyte of Final Cut Pro projects to the NAS and I'm getting a nice 600 megabytes per second so the cache is definitely making a difference, pretty much doubling our write speeds. But when the cache fills up, it's gonna go back down to more like 350 megabytes per second. So the DXP4800 Plus has a lot more to offer than just being a backup box, right? I'm gonna primarily be using it for that, but you can sync all your photos from your phone. So every time you take a picture, it goes to the NAS as opposed to going to the cloud, or you could have it going to both places if you wanted to. So you'd have a double backup, right? Every time you take a photo, one goes to iCloud or whatever you use, one goes to the NAS, and you can hook it up to a monitor via HDMI, and it's got some basic playback features with a remote on the phone app, so you can control your videos right from your phone to play on your TV or your monitor. And there's a link in the description if you wanna get one of these, and I do make a small commission, so I appreciate your support. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, give me that thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.